smaller. And uh, let's just go through some examples here of different uh, types of uh, situations where you may want to use this approach. So this is, again, nothing pretty here, but this is a, a typical visual. It's a matrix. Everybody loves a matrix visual. Um, it's got three uh, dimension columns along the rows, and then it's got uh, five measures here. And some of these are intentionally using some bad uh, DAX there to make it a little less performant. All right. And so I've created a bunch of uh, calculation items. So I made this calculation group called guardrails, uh, which you'll see why that is in a minute. And then I've got multiple uh, variations on the different calculations item here to do different sorts of uh, protection. And basically the gist here, uh, all these have a similar pattern where you basically, before I go off and run a really big query that brings back lots of data with lots of expensive um, DAX from multiple, perhaps inefficient measures, uh, I do a real simple calculation first, just to make sure I, I can check, like in this case, I'm checking to see uh, how many rows in the fact table I have in context. And if it's too many, then I say, you know, I return blank basically, uh, and maybe put some text there to tell my user to uh, add more filters. Um, and you can also put limits on like the, the dimensions. And so here I'm, I have two dimensions. I have, you know, airport slicer and uh, airline carrier slicer. Uh, and again, I can go out and see how many values of that are in context. I can multiply them together. And if it's too large, again, I return blank. If it's not too many, I go ahead and, and do the more expensive calculations. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll talk through all these. And on the different pages, I have these expressions as well. So what does that look like in practice? So I've got this visual here. I've added this guardrails calculation group to, to the visual filter. Um, in this case, I've, I'll, I'll put the fact uh, count there. And so now what you'll see is if I clear these city and carrier slicers, well, even just from the first one, um, it turns out there's more than there's 33 million rows in the fact table in this context. Uh, and so therefore it returns blank. I don't want to go off and do all those expensive calculations uh, when the full fact table is in context. Uh, and again, typically you'd try to do report design to mitigate this, but sometimes, you know, a single select slicer doesn't work. And, you, you know, people need to be able to choose multiple, but you don't want to have this sort of default situation where it's, it's full out. And, you know, the first time they come to the page, it runs that expensive query. They're maybe waiting unnecessarily long and you're just chewing up capacity on a big uh, query that uh, you didn't really need. Right. Um, so if we, you know, but if we then pick um, and then, you know, we can choose a couple of, I'll choose one city, uh, then, then I get my data there. Okay. And the same thing, if I were to choose this airport carriers limit, um, turn that one off, turn this one back on, um, you know, I, I see data, but if I have, you know, too many uh, in context, so Alaska doesn't go to, I had 7,000 uh, as the limit here, it doesn't go to more than that. Um, but uh, if I pull that off, then again, it returns a blank. And so, you know, you know your data best. You can you can come up with the right sort of calculation item that acts as a guardrail to it. Uh, and, and again, of course, you want to let your report consumers know either with like an info tool tip or some text box or something to say, you know, hey, here's why you're not seeing data. You need to add more filters to, to reduce the size of the data set. Um, and so just to go over to DAX Studio, just to show you sort of the level of impact this can have. Uh, I've grabbed the visual from this query already. DAX Studio is already connected to that model. And I cleaned this up a little bit, uh, took off some of the extra stuff you don't need, focused on this summarized columns. I formatted it in debug comma. So these are at the front here and I can easily comment stuff out. Um, I've got my um, uh, calculation item here and I'll just do the uh, fact. I'll comment that back in the fact limit one million one, uh, and then I've got my two slicers here, one for the airlines and one for the cities. I've, I've got two cities here. Um, so now if I run this straight out just to see, you know, or this would return some data here because I have enough filters here. It's less than a million rows just to see how long the, the query would take. Uh, 370 total is what the user should experience. Uh, 50, only 58 milliseconds formula engine, 
but 1.3 total storage engine, it's, it's parallelized, so it's not that long in duration. Um, but you know, this this overall storage engine and this formula engine, those are going to uh, add up to be what your capacity sees from a query standpoint. Uh, and you can see a number of storage engine queries. There's one bold here. So again, I mentioned this is some some inefficient DAX here, right? Um, but let's pretend um, I comment out my calculation group. Um, you know, we can see sort of what kind of overhead this this approach has. So if I if I comment out the calculation item and run it again, you'll see it gets a little better. Um, so you know, it it does add some overhead. You know, you try to write the most efficient uh, check you can do so that your overhead is minimal for for you know all the subsequent queries that are going to come. Um, but if we look at what this looks like for if I don't have my calculation item and if I comment out uh, both of those slicers, so this is sort of the what they would come to on the opening page uh, with no selections and no guardrail in place. If I run this one, you can see it's quite a bit more. Uh, and so again, I help people optimize their their reports and models and DAX to to minimize impact. But you see, you know. 18,000 uh, milliseconds of storage engine, 3,000 formula engine. Um, that would be a big hit on your capacity. Uh, and especially if they didn't need that, that they really just were going to that page, let that visual refresh, and then they made slicer selections for what they really needed. You've wasted a bunch of, of capacity units. Okay. Uh, all right. And so, oh, so what it looks like too, sorry, one more thing. Uh, is if I uncomment, so now if I do put the calculation item in place, but I have no other filters, so again, the, the, um, this is what they would experience. You know, they would come here and it would be super fast, you know, seven milliseconds, zero, you know, storage engine CPU. That check of how many rows are in the fact table is extremely fast. Um, and again, it's a really great guardrail uh, to, again, spend very little, check to make sure you're not in a crazy uh, situation with a big runaway query. Uh, and then if it's safe, then go ahead and execute, right? So that's the gist of it. And so all these different patterns I'll show you next, uh, follow the same pattern. And I, I won't do the DAX Studio part for all of them. Okay, all right. So that's uh, count on fact rows or a count on, you know, the combinations, the potential combinations of, of airports and, and carriers. Um, you can also do this for defaults. So instead of returning blank, I could say, hey, you know, uh, most of my report consumers look at the Orlando airport or a certain product or category or something. So I could default to something. So it's just sitting there with the data they're interested in. Uh, and uh, so, again, this, this is the, the expression here for the calculation item. It's very similar. Basically, I'm checking to say, hey, is there a slicer? You know, is the airport table filtered? Um, and if it is, go ahead and um, run whatever the selected measure is. Otherwise, run the selected measure where the airport's code equals Orlando. So again, this is like a de default slicer, but I have nothing um, selected in the slicer. Uh, and then, you know, if if they do, uh, you know, decide to do something, and know a bunch of code. So I'll just pick Indianapolis where I live and Orlando. Um, again, it's always good to put text box or some way for your consumer to know why they're not seeing data or, or what they are seeing. And then, you know, I have this simple measure here uh, where I just display the uh, selected airports, uh, which measure is that this one here, you know, where I go and, you know, get the values of airport code. And, you know, this is a, a fairly common pattern out there. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So again, if you're going to use these techniques, make sure your consumers know and understand why they're not seeing data. All right. Um, you can do a similar thing with the default date. So in this case, um, you could, again, you put text to tell your consumer if no date range is selected, it defaults to the previous month. Um, this model actually doesn't have data in the current month and it thinks the current month is July of uh, 20, 2022 because um, I haven't updated this database, uh, but uh, so it, so it defaults to the to the previous month, right? And so again, um, a much more efficient query uh, than running it full out. 
But if somebody comes along and they do need, say they're interested in 2019 data, right, then then it runs. And then my uh, slicer here or my card updates to say what date range uh, is in scope for the for the values above. Right. And so for this one, uh, very similar again, where I'm checking to say, hey, is the date column or table uh, filtered? Um, since I've got some date slicers on here, I think I use cross filters. I forget why. Uh, and then, you know, do the selected measure. Otherwise, you know, do this. And then using this keep filters is important. Otherwise, you'd get a value on every row and it would they would all show the same number for, you know, dates from now um, uh, being the previous month. And I have a, a months from now index, which is a, a good practice I've talked about in another video to have, you know, years from now, quarters from now, months from now, weeks from now, days from now as an index to really simplify some of your DAX and give you some good functionality. Uh, and then for this card, uh, this expression is shown here where I'm doing, you know, similar logic for, hey, I'm checking if the date column is, is cross filtered. Uh, and then I'm just showing my date range by using min and max or um, calculating min and max from, you know, months from now equals the previous month. Uh, so I can display that and people aren't confused at uh, which data they're seeing. All right. Now you may have noticed, uh, you know, these visuals and the one before it didn't have a column from it in the, uh, that is the same table we're checking. So here's, here's another example where this one, I'm actually using dates in the visual. Uh, and so it does, complicate the DAX a little bit, but it does, it's still a quicker check than doing it full out. And so in this case, to know if, um, because this is filled, giving date row, date table context in this, in this visual, um, I need to get out of that. So I, I check two things. I check, you know, how many rows are in the date table. And then I check how many rows or are in the date table outside this visual using all selected. And, you know, basically, if those are the same, uh, then I know that nothing is selected to filter the date table. Um, but if the all dates count is greater than the all selected dates count, then I know there's a date context here and go ahead and, and run that. Um, and then, you know, again, if I choose 2020, um, this will update with 2020 data. And I should have added a slicer or a, a card here as well to, to show the date range that's actually there and to show that uh, uh, previous one. I have this note here, but that card would have been good too on this page. All right. So this uh, technique can also be extended to field parameters. And so in this case, um, I've created two field parameters. I've got one that adds uh, different columns to the visual and one that adds different measures. And so I see this a lot with table or matrix visuals. People have a, either they just put them all in the visual, which is asking for performance and capacity trouble, um, or they have a field parameter where people can choose as many as they want. And of course, people will choose lots of them. And so again, hopefully this is consistent with what your business can accept. Um, but I built these so that if there's more than three uh, measures, uh, then it returns nothing. And I, again, uh, I gave text here to say, hey, if there's no data, make sure you choose less than or equal to three columns and less than or equal to three measures. And this one, I have this calculation in effect on this visual where both of those have to be true um, to, to get the selected measure to run. Otherwise, it returns blank. Um, but I could have put just a limit on the number of columns uh, that you can select or the number of measures that you can select. Okay. Um, so that's for field parameters. Uh, and again, I'm just counting rows of the field parameter table itself to see how many, how many fields they selected. And then the last example here is with small multiples. So if I use um, the field parameter for the columns field parameter in my small multiples, and I choose, you know, multiple things here, uh, especially with small multiples and some visuals that can get really slow uh, to render, uh, which is not a great user experience, but also um, is big queries back to your back to your uh, capacity. Um, so this one is again checking that if there's you know more than uh, three three is okay, but if a fourth one is cho chosen, then it quickly returns blank. And I've protected the the visual. I've protected the the capacity. Right. So again, hopefully this gives you some ideas on what you may may be able to apply to your visuals. Uh, so that, again, you can 
improve your user experience with some default type uh, selections, uh, increase the overall uh, performance, and then of course save capacity uh, on your fabric capacity so that you know you can run more reports and everybody's user experience is even better.